Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life mister, segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop with another one of your favorites. You guys really don't deserve this many great shows in a row because we also have Sarah Colonna. Hey, girl. Sarah. <laughs> Heather, I'm so happy to see you. Me too. I'm, I'm so really happy to be here. And I mean, listen, we are shooketh like the universe watching the Oprah interview of Harry and um, Meghan. And last night, Chris tried to text me, get me going talking about it. My other friend Liz did. And I said, I'm saving it. I'm mm. saving my opinions. I'm saving my thoughts. I took notes to talk about it with you. And I just want to just like really go through it all. I appreciate that it. you saved it because I assumed Chris was texting you since he is, you know, all he talks about is how he's used to fold napkins with Meghan Markle exactly. at a restaurant. I worked at that same restaurant. I don't remember her ever being there, but I don't think Chris is lying. I just think. I must have quit or something before she got there. Well, the interview took place in <laughs> not Oprah's backyard, not Megan's backyard, because they live just down the road from each other. Where in Santa Barbara, when you're on huge estates, that road might be several miles and miles. They found a friend that also had a gorgeous backyard. So they did it there and they both looked great. And Megan is pregnant with her second child, which she announced was a girl, which was, for some reason, we have so much in common. I guess I misspoke last week, and I said she was pregnant with her second boy. I was wrong. Oh. I just figured she was following my footsteps, <laughs> and she was going to have two boys. But right. in fact, they're expecting a girl. Yeah. Well, cute. maybe she changed it. <laughs> maybe she maybe she swapped it out. <laughs> maybe she was like, no, put a boy in, uh, put a girl in there. I don't want to seem like a copycat with Heather. Maybe so. Um She's so pretty. She's really pretty. I've I couldn't stop looking. I like was, the freckles. Oh she God. has like that perfect. She has like the. Per I have freckles, but I don't have that perfect smattering of them in the perfect place that makes you look like young and dewy and like. And then she uh, kind of has that good, like a little bit fuller pregnancy face. Yeah. So she just she looked like she is younger than our on her wedding day. She's yeah. just stunning. She is stunning. I will. Can we talk about yes. Oprah's footwear just real quick? <laughs> yes, please do. And I don't, I'm sorry to have a photo of the foot, but go she, on. I just, she was wearing like a very sensible uh, high, knee high boot. Like oh, a, it yeah. sort of looked like a, what are those, um, like a natural spirit or oh, what are those? Oh, <laughs> naturalizers. Like, it looked like. Yes. A, yeah. She was wearing, she just wanted to be comfortable. And Megan was wearing heels and she's pregnant and loafer and, uh, and, 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 and Oprah was wearing basically the equivalent of like a loafer in a boot. And I, I just... mean, I, lo I love <laughs> Oprah. And I was thinking about it because I remember when she celebrated her 40th birthday. I remember when she celebrated her 50th birthday at a massive bash in Montecito where she invited all of like Hollywood royalty and everyone was told to wear black, I believe, black or white. But and then she showed up in a red dress. Oh, I like and that. And I move. feel like she was the first person that did that. I've had I had my other friend Lainey do it for her birthday when she turned fifty. That's a power move. Yes. I like and it. and I didn't know that. I almost went wearing a red dress. And I got there and I was like, How did I not and they're they're like, Didn't you see it on the invitation that you had to wear black and white? I'm like, Well, thank God I didn't wear the red dress I was thinking of wearing I mean I if Were you I, in black? Like I was in black, but I've had I arrived in red and seen that she was pulling an Oprah, I would have gone to the Target, which was across from the restaurant, and just bought some black sweats. Like yeah. she would have murdered me. Yeah, that would have been a bad. Her and Oprah's hair looked really good. I just want to say that too. Oprah has great hair. She has really good hair. I, I forget because we haven't really seen her the do an interview in a, a while. Weird. Her little eyeglasses were a little odd. Um, makeup was nice. I like a purple eyeshadow. Um, me too. I you can't know, pull it she, off. I don't know how old she is, but she's got to be like at least sixty-five, right? And you know, she looks great. Yeah, she really does. And I always said she would come back somehow, and it seems like she's being quite busy. She's got 
her Soul Sunday interview thing also happening in a beautiful backyard in Santa Barbara. That's oh, right. coming back. That's on like Discovery Channel. She mentioned she's got a whole project with Harry going on. So she's she's back, but it's all going to only happen with people in Santa Barbara. And and she loves the yard. She just wants to be in the Who yard. Who doesn't <laughs> love a yard? And Why live in <laughs> Like I always think about like. Oh, did they go to like some little overpriced bakery before? Like, what was the craft services here for all the people that they made sure they showed everybody with the masks on and yeah. everything? Um, as if the two of them haven't been vaccinated. But whatever. Right. I don't know. Right. Um, anyway, uh, snuggled it. Now, it was hard being a West Coast person. Because we started seeing stuff popping in at like 520. I know. I was trying not to like look on Twitter and stuff because everyone was talking about very specific parts of it that weren't released yet. And I was yes. like, oh, man. No, I'm not. So yes. I, I tried not to look. I didn't want to. Okay. So in general, I'm going to tell you from what I took from the show, my theory, and then let's just like get into it. Okay. Um, I absolutely think she was done being on a cable show for Suits. She found her strawberry blonde prince. She would, did not have to work. She was ready to just live a life of leisure as a princess. Mm -hmm. You also married a strawberry blonde prince. I did. Who is an NFL <laughs> he's the player. Prince, he's the prince of Canada. <laughs> and you're pretty much set financially. In that marriage, let's just be honest. And you probably thought, I never have to do stand-up again. I never have to go and do Juicy Scoop again. I can just <laughs> help the children of Sherman Oaks. Right. In between me going and doing my Peloton bike. And right. And pre-COVID, you'd go to spinning class with strangers. Right. Yes. That's a big But then, no -no. just like Meghan Markle, you decided... You know, this was, I, I, I'm going to have to continue my career. I want to do other things. I want to bring the laughter to the people. Yes. And if you were truly the princess with your strawberry blonde prince in Canada and his family said, um, and you said, can I go to a cute lunch with Heather? And they said, Sarah, you've already been to a cute lunch four months ago. You have to stay in this house. I think she said she went out twice in four months. And so the third time that she wanted to go out, she wanted to get a cute lunch. And they said, no, you're out there too much. You cannot go. Oh, yeah. I'd run for I'd run for the hills. I can't. I have to have a cute lunch. And it can't be just once every six months. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> it was very weird to hear all that stuff. I didn't know that went on. I was as, The more that conversation went on and yes. then she kept talking about the firm it and was the, the, it's like okay, the, it's like was, the okay. mafia there's the monarchy there's the family there's the institution there's the firm and then there's the i feel like there was one other way anyway basically it was scientology and she might have been roomies with miscavige's wife at this point i was like what is this right because and the confusing part was he's they're very close with the queen, it seems, still. Yeah. Like, she... So it's almost like it was people even... How are you... Who's above the queen that's telling her what to do? You know what I mean? I like, think it's... I do think it was a lot of jealousy uh, on many levels of, like, we have to do this. And, you know, let, let's talk about, like... Okay, so the one thing that came out in the beginning of the interview was, you know, the story that came out six months after her wedding that she made... Kate Middleton cry over flower girl dresses. Right. And then she said, that's not true. In fact, Kate made me cry over flower girl dresses and then sent me a gift and apologized and we were fine. And then seven months later, how did this story get leaked out? And why would, what was really interesting is when she basically just pulled the lid on like the Royals basically have control of the media and yeah. what get, gets written. Which I don't know if that's one hundred percent true, but she said that, and then and that they had their holiday parties at the palace, so it must have them. So she almost felt like they have allowed these stories to come out, yeah. Because instead she, of trying to squash them and being like, the girls are great friends, like knock it off, people. Yeah, because Oprah was even like, well, if that's how it happened, why why so many months later did this even come out? I will say that's the part of the interview since that was at the beginning. Yeah, that was the part of the interview where I was like, I'm gonna hate this whole thing because this seems who I don't care about a like flower dress and petty. who made who yeah, cry. It's so petty. stupid, and it and seemed extremely relatable to anybody planning a wedding. Right, who hasn't cried? I mean, my 
my sister brought her uh, for my sh- for Shannon's wedding, her little two and a half year old or three year old. No, no, she she was about I can't remember if she was two or four. Anyway, she came over and she was in her dress and she was a little girl and she had her sippy bottle of Sprite. And she left it on, my sister wasn't watching her, she left it on the couch, and I sat on it in my green satin dress as maid of honor. Mm. And for the two hour mass, I had to kneel with the best man, so it was the bride, the groom, and I had a big, huge stain on my ass. (laughs) So again, I can relate to Meghan Markle, I can relate to some like flower girl bullshit. Have you told that story before, and Meghan heard it, and spun it, and made it her own? Is that what happened? I mean, sometimes people just, yeah, create a story for themselves. I wanted to I look at this wedding photo and just get into the flower girl I mean, they're adorable. Dresses. Now, it looks like every flower girl had the same dress, which sometimes they don't. Sometimes maybe one flower girl has a, like, just a bride, just like a bridesmaid has, right. like, a little. So, um, and then there's, like, a couple, two little cuties. So they all have the dress. I have to say it's quite plain. Yeah. It's quite plain. And maybe Kate was like, why couldn't we add some lace, at least to my little Charlotte? Spice it up. Yeah. Or, what you know, and then, and then, you and know, Megan was like, like, I match. like it plain. Like, I, I, pre- I also predicted her dress. That's right. Um, because I knew she wouldn't want to do lace because Kate had lace and because it was also her second marriage. Now, how do you feel about the fact that they revealed that they actually were married three days before the big church ceremony? Uh, yeah, I thought that was. And she just kind of like threw it out there really While quick. While feeding the chickens. <laughs> Which, by the way, I have chickens. I have chickens. Wow. And they made a big deal. And I said, Peter, she's copying me. She has rescue chickens. And he goes, well, so are, so are our chickens. All chickens are rescue chickens unless you kick them. Unless That's you cook and true. eat them, they're living a rescue life. Yeah. How is it? What's the difference between an alive chicken and a rescue chicken? I mean, all... the rescue, like, like, we're not sex trafficking the eggs or frying them. Like, <laughs> what are you saying? That How is it a, a, a rescued chicken? Um I don't know. I think it just sounds nice, and you should start adding that. And when we you, have a little you say that you have. And hers was called Archie's Chick Inn. What's yours called? Ours is called Drake and Brandon Brandon's International Chicken Rescue for Underprivileged Chickens mm. in the San Fernando Valley. Mm. Um, just rolls right off the tongue. And then there's a, <laughs> what's that thing when, when, it's a, when it's a charity? It's a 520? What is it? Yeah, five twenty. It's a twenty eight. It's a yeah, nonprofit. It's a, yeah, it's a nonprofit. Uh-huh. It's a nonprofit, and um, so whatever. Uh, well, I feel like Oprah's probably going to come knocking on your door in a in a sensible boot soon oh, and ask and you. They, oh, and they had to put on like, uh, like rain boots, as if like going to <laughs> An this vest. tiny chicken thing. Like you have to, yeah. You have to dress like you're at the farm. It's like it's just in your backyard. <laughs> You don't have to. Do you get up and put on a different outfit when you go look at your chickens, or do you just wear I the mean, same thing? I mean, you're so down to earth. My they're grandpa so, so had chickens. I never. You're down to earth. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like, oh my God, to think that this princess that was a princess for a year and a half is now feeding rescue chickens in a seven million dollar <laughs> Santa Barbara house. It's like, wow. Could those, you get more real, girl? Those chickens have a nice life, just like yours. They do. Um, so so that was kind of interesting. And then the whole, okay, so the press stuff was interesting. When they, they she highlighted the BuzzFeed article about the different um, headlines between she and Kate. Right. One being, I remember where I was when I read that her friend described Meghan Markle as the avocado whisperer. And I thought it was a ridiculous <laughs> article. It was pro Megan. I still thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. No one can make better avocado toast then can I who the okay <laughs> it's avocado toast I'm so sick of people's avocado toast recipes it's in the title it's avocado and fucking toast it's not that special I just think maybe about seven years ago everybody I'm used passionate to, about everybody this, used Heather. to slice avocado on a sandwich they'd keep the slices just so they were slippery and they'd fall off you take a bite and one little slice would slip off and then you'd put it back on and then one day pers- someone said, you know how we mash up avocados for guac? Yeah. What if we just kind of mashed it on the toast? Mm. And then you get that avocado flavor, whether you have the 
And you know what? You don't have to just do a sandwich. You could just have just the avocado mash on the toast, and we could charge fourteen ninety nine. It's an open face sandwich. It's still a sandwich. It's a deconstructed it's sandwich. It's a deconstructed. Thank you. That's true. Sorry, I'm not as um, um, I'm not as culinary anyway, they, as you are. They, so the art the article was um, that you know Kate loves an avocado or something, and then the other one was how dare uh, how dare Megan enjoy avocados because they require a lot of water, and therefore she's a hypocrite. She doesn't really care about the environment because she's eating an avocado, which oh was pretty ridiculous and. Yeah. Um, you know, we all chuckled. Oprah, yeah. Myself and Megan chuckled, <laughs> chuckled, chuckled, chuckled. Um, so there you go. Uh, I don't even know how you slept last night, honestly, with all this okay. on your mind. Do you know that I did not sleep? <laughs> I woke up about seven times last night thinking about, th- about this show, I thinking bet. about Kate. I mean, I really did. I was just like, ah, because... Okay, now here's the other thing. Do you think, now she said, um, my mom actually asked, did Diana, Princess Diana, ever do a sit-down interview? That's how not following the royals we were. Right. I'm not saying that the mom did not ask that, okay? I believe that maybe the mom, who was, like, getting her graduate degree in social work at USC, uh, again, (laughs) USC, whatever, we have a lot in common. (laughs) I don't think... I think, I believe that. I believe that. Did she ever do a, I remember, did she ever do a sit down? Well, of course, I remember the sit down interviews. Right. I remember Diana being like, it was quite hard having three people in the relationship. Like, I remember right. that. And you're yeah. like, oh, he's had that girl from the whole time. Yeah. Camilla. Anyway, but do you, but there's also stories like, oh, you know, her college roommate, Megan's college roommate said she had the book of Diana's life in her dorm room. Oh, okay. So, in other words, it seems like maybe the mom never asked that because they knew everything Diana had ever done. Sir, maybe the mom didn't know, but I feel like Megan knew. Right. And to say, I never Googled him. Okay. okay. That Also marrying a strawberry prince mm-hmm. who hit on you via the internet yeah. through Ross Matthews. Yes. First thing and I did. And Ross said, there is this NFL player that's interested in you. He is a strawberry prince who plays football from Canada. And I remember you just said, I don't need to see what he looks like. Answer me one question, Ross. Is he kind? (laughs) Is he kind? Yes, I'll meet him at the Soho house. Perhaps if he's kind and likes to help small children in Canada. Is that what happened? That's actually exactly what happened. Or did you... No, I never saw him, never Googled him. I, In fact, the first time we ever went on a date, I was like, oh, my God. Well, I, didn't I know hate what to you tell the like. Juicy Scoopers, but she's lying. <laughs> um, it's a huge lie. Huge Literally, lie. the first thing I did was type in his name. And a terrifying photo a of him terrifying. with very long hair came up where he looked like a, like a, a Viking. But um, then you found out later that he was growing out his hair to make little strawberry wigs for cancer children. He actually did grow it up for locks of love. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you the truth. It so, sounds like a joke. I know. So, But he is kind. He's kind. <laughs> <laughs> but I found out he was kind from the internet. Yes. Because he, I Googled him. And you, if you Googled him too, Prince Harry, you would know he was a great guy. He also had that, remember that fun time you had in okay, Vegas? Okay, I was going to say, I remember... Like his it, naked body in Vegas. Wasn't it our Chelsea Lately days when Those that were was our happening? Chelsea Lately, he yeah. was ripping it up like you did pre-COVID. He was like fully Adam, naked like, playing pool. Like, <laughs> drink, like, like one of those days where he drank by the pool all day in Vegas and then was naked playing pool in a suite and someone got to take a photo from like a balcony into the suite and we saw Oh, I him. thought it was like his friend that leaked it or something. I don't but really I, remember. Who knows? I just yeah. remember I can see the naked. If I could remember the naked body, you're telling me. Oh, that's what kept you up last night. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah but he um, had, you, like she never Googled yeah. and saw those things. But and, I always think, why, why do people do that? Why is that always the thing when a non or a less famous person is dating someone famous? Like they always are like, oh, I never, I never saw this. Sh- I never watched the show or like Hilaria Baldwin. I did not know who Alec was, you know, like I love really, it. <laughs> really. You've never heard of Alec Baldwin. He's like one Oscar. He, I mean, you've pretty established name. There's also three other actors with the same last name. That's really successful. You never heard the name of Alec Baldwin. You never knew who he was. You I know don't who else just said that too? about that. That Shailene, uh, Shailene 
Woodley? Yeah. Am I saying her name right? Yeah. Oh, because she's engaged. She's with Aaron Rodgers. They're engaged, and she said she didn't know anything about it. There's no way you didn't, you, like, you don't have to be a football fan. I hate, I don't watch any football. But you except, know that name. But yes, you absolutely know the name, or you know the name because his brother was on The Bachelor. Like, you know the name. Like, they not only is a fo- he's a football player, but he has stories written about his And he was married, life. what's, her, yeah, or yeah, not married, he but he was a, with Olivia. Olivia. Is it Wild or Mun? Mun, Mun. Mun, yeah. He was with her for a long time. I just feel like she knew, I mean, I don't know, I feel like she downplayed not knowing. Yes something about him i mean maybe I, yes she said well yeah i knew he played football but like you know a little more than that now the other thing she said i did tweet about last night just because i felt it was such a minute detail that i knew everyone would be talking about harry and megan and so i kind of wanted to be that only person that brought up something but i got some hate for it what it was that she worked at humphrey's yogurt at 13 years old humphrey yogurt Yogurt. Humphrey Yogurt. Or someone tried to correct my spelling, and I spelled it the yogurt way. Yeah. G-A-R-T. I'm a horrible speller. I make a million mistakes on the internet, but you, that time I was correct. You got it right. It's and a play. If people don't understand now, the play on words. Then. Again, we both grew up in L.A., and she is te- more than 10 years younger than I am. And I, my first job, <sighs> Haagen-Dazs Yogurt Ventura Boulevard, Tarzana. Oh, my God. She's Not ripping yogurt, no, you off left and right. Cream. Hagen dazs ice cream, which was very hard because I didn't just go like that. I didn't just pull it down like a lazy person. I had to work it up. But yeah, you probably got strong you biceps. You had to be from that. sixteen, right? And if I had to be sixteen back in the eighties to get a job in Los Angeles at a place. Now I understand if it's I was a babysitter. I had a a dog walking business. I threw newspapers out. I've been working since I was thirteen, or I worked at my dad's diner. I get yeah. it. But a, a franchise thing where you'd get a government issued check where you would ch- actually had a time code. Right. And she said How she could was... you work there at 13? Yeah, that's. Well, Twitter would have blazed. I got about eight replies. What <laughs> what, what did they say? Did they? <laughs> They're like, they went a blaze. I'm so disappointed in you. That's the one thing you bring up, you know? And I'm like, well, I'm just asking. And then I got, and then who answers what my do you mean question? That's the one thing. Sam you... Lufty. Oh. Answered my question. Oh, good. He's Sam got an Lufty answer. is the former manager of Britney Spears, mm-hmm. who I have DM'd saying, come on my show, Sam Lufty. So, of course, I said, can we talk more about this? But he wrote, a, he said, only children under 12 can get a work permit for entertainment. Only if it's for entertainment. You cannot work under 12. You can get a work permit for other things, but basically the age is, you know, 15, 16 years old. Um, I feel like even now it could, it's like, maybe still could it be did, I remember when I she said like- it, I was thinking, like, my first job, not to brag, was at Hardee's when I was 16. And um, I had to, I couldn't get a job till I was 16. Yes, we all waited till we were 16. Or I thought I couldn't, but maybe it was just that that's when we were told to get a job so by our parents. So I'm not I don't saying know. that she is lying or that she meant to say 16 and said 13. Or maybe really she did have a friend and they owned that Humphreys franchise and she and her girlfriend got to make yogurt on Saturdays. I mean, my dad had my friends passing out pumpkins for real estate, so you maybe know, she hanging was... out in an open truck, you know. So good thing that he's no longer here and can't be sued. <laughs> what did you bring me, Peter? Is it the, is it no. the information? Federal child laws. My point is, I, I think it's kind of sad she to work at 13. That's all. Yeah. Because at that same time, she was writing that that letter that the cleaning commercials were sexist and she was, you know, famous at 10. Why okay. are people mad that you brought it up, though? Like, if you have a whole podcast where you're going to talk about stuff the next day, like, well, of course, you're I only- told you only eight people were mad. OK, oh, oh, OK. Federal child labor laws set the minimum age to work at 14 with some exceptions in California. Minimum age to work is also 14 in most cases in states where there is conflict between federal and state laws, the more restrictive law applies well still she said she was 13 so even if somebody was going to allow so maybe she was off by a year i don't know who cares the I, point is there's a humphrey I yogurt like, in, i just feel like there's in, Pavil- in gelson's next to my house yeah. and i'm going to go in there and i'm going to be like do you have any 13 year olds working here? yes yeah and yeah, if just so go, go in there and go my daughter's 13 and she'd like to apply for a job how do we go about doing that and just see what they say Okay. And then go, well, Meghan Markle did it, so I'm gonna wear, I'm uh, why gonna wear are you like stopping a... her from her princess tracks? Yeah. No, but I think, um, I just think that's always something that people say. Like, it's always a movie star, and they'll start the thing, and they'll go, Julia Roberts, 
used to sweep hair at her mom's hair salon when she was 15. And it's like, <gasps> Julia Roberts did that? Well, Julia Roberts wasn't Julia Roberts. Like, we yeah, all had Everyone had a job, yeah. And so I don't understand when people are like, I had a job. Well, I, yeah, everyone had yeah, a job. Yeah, everyone had everyone a job. Had to work. People had allowances. I mean... I don't know. I it's, just think that's always such the thing to say. Like, I was working at the railroad track before <laughs> I became a Rockefeller. Like, I don't know. It's funny that you bring up Julia Roberts when we're talking about this because you know who I saw one time at Humphrey Yogard in the Gelsons by my house? I hope it's Julia Roberts. Eric Roberts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> even better. I think it's even better. He was, And I wanted to actually um, get his autograph or talk to him because I'm a big fan of his from the Lifetime movies, Stalked by My Doctor where he plays a real creep. Oh, God, that was such a good one. It was a really good one. Did he smell like cigarettes? I imagine that he did. I didn't talk to him. I just wanted to. I was too afraid. I I mean, he looked like he wanted some yogurt. I didn't want to bug him. (laughs) Did a 13-year-old help him? (laughs) What if if something comes down where, like, Humphrey's yogurt is now, like, under a microscope, and, like, they're, like, they have to make a big statement. Like, we told all our franchise people to not hire anyone under 16 in the mid-90s. We don't know why Megan was slave labor. Her arm has always been larger. Her right arm has always been larger than her left. Hashtag, and now we know why. Because hashtag boycott Humphrey Yogurt. Ch- child labor laws. Um, okay, so let's let's get more into it. So, um, so that was obviously very disturbing that, that like this where she had to ask and she couldn't do anything and she couldn't have fun. I also thought it was interesting that she didn't read or or read anything about the press. So therefore why was it so crippling and debilitating to herself if she wasn't reading it? Like I read those eight comments saying you're an asshole Heather for bringing up Humphrey's yogurt and I couldn't sleep. Right. So I think that's very healthy not to read the things but then it makes me go if you weren't reading it at all wh- why was it affecting you so much yeah because if you're not reading it then that means everyone's just telling you about it which means you have like, shitty friends that? yeah, yeah like, why like, would you tell you someone someone shouldn't be like guess what i read about you today yeah especially right. if they know you don't read it i do think that like you said it's very healthy if they don't i think it's impossible for people not to read some of it yeah and be aware of it yeah. Uh, yeah so i don't know if she it, maybe she used to read it and then she stopped at one point because that did get super depressing when yeah. she started talking about how hard that was on her. So maybe there was a point where she was like, I just can't, but maybe it's just impossible. Maybe you walk by, you know, well, not that she's probably walking by newsstands. I guess she was yeah. like locked in a castle, but um, you know, you just somehow hear about it, I guess, but I don't you, know. You know um, that really funny uh, comedian, he's a, scr- a sitcom writer, I had him on my show a while ago, Gary, and he has a whole in- in, um, Instagram account as just as oh, the yeah. child, as uh, William's oldest son, yeah, George. Yeah, Gary Janetti. Is, is that oldest how you son, say? George? Yes, mm-hmm. George. Yes. Um, and yeah, Gary what? Janetti, I think. Yes, is he's, so yeah, he's so funny. He's married to Brad Gorin. Yeah. I can never say anyone's last name, from Fashion Police. And brilliant. And he kind of has almost like Nori's Black Book, talk his uh, parody account, acting like she's Northwest, writing about her family. He does it as... Prince George, the yes. little boy. And he definitely he's take, made Prince George this parody of he's obviously that he is a aspiring gay man, a gay prince. It's very funny. Yeah. A lot of it is was in the is uh, Prince George like giving a snarly look like a camera would capture it, giving a snarly look at like not liking Megan's outfit. And right. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I just wonder, like, is Gary kind of having a shitty day today? Kind of going, fuck, can I not do this anymore? Or can I definitely do it now? Can right. I make George, little baby George, an ally of Megan and be like, I was an asshole at four. Like, you know. Right. What do you do so with that? Because so many people make money and talk about it and write about it and do things about it because it is such a big thing, just like the Paris Hilton and then Sarah Silverman apologizing for her um, monologue in 2007, which I think she did a really great job at. But it's like, okay, you know, now we... Yeah, what direction do I go now? Or do yeah. I just dig my heels in? Do I like, dig my heels in or just go, okay, let's put let's put that to rest. I'm a brilliant writer. I'll write something else. Yeah, it's hard because it's so funny and it's so, and it's and just, yes. it's so made silly. up it's and so, silly. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't seem venomous at all. Right, yeah. But when you hear her say last night that like, she got to the point where she was like suicidal, suicidal yeah. about people saying stuff about her, then there's probably that... Yeah, of course. There's a reflection of mm-hmm. of now what. So, 
I you know, know, someone also brought up a great point um, on Juicy Scoop Obsessed was like, you know, it's kind of interesting because she said, you know, you can like us both. The, the media and people felt like, or they cre the media created a narrative that you had to either like Kate Middleton or Megan. And you had to like oh, either, you couldn't like them both because we're going to let you know they don't like each other. And I think, I definitely think that had there hadn't been that news media throwing these stories out there, I think they probably did get get along okay. They might not have been, as my dad would say, asshole buddies. Right. They might have not been laughing their ass What's off because asshole buddy. My dad would just <laughs> always say that. It was just that like really good friend, just like talk about anything. And I don't really think so because I they like did it. come from different worlds. And not like I'm here and you're here. More just like she's a California LA girl. Kate's been like with the prince ten or twelve years before she became princess. So she's been training for this job. She is English. Right. She had, you know, she is one day going to be, you know, the wife of the king. Like her her whole thing is a little different. So I think that she was probably very nice to Megan, but they're probably they probably didn't totally vibe. And then with all these other people like saying things and, and like, then and also like you said nobody um and like she even said yeah. nobody squashing it or correcting it or right. trying to you know that adds to it because like right. you're right why wouldn't i mean i would be like oh i would think i mean i don't know either of them but i would think yeah. kate would be like oh cool we have a whole like a new fresher view of things in this and world like, yeah, and, and she's a, cool and i have a fun and, girl that i can hang out with yeah we could, if we can't both leave the palace at least we could like have a cute lunch inside the palace together yeah on those days when they won't let you leave and all, all those the gloomy time. days and i think there was probably a mold issue mm, why do you think there was a mold because issue? i just feel like they were like in a place that needed renovation and it's right. old like hundreds and hundreds of years old and it, with all the moss and coldness outside and also, it's just like a, a born and raised California girl. I think the weather, honestly, really affect. Listen, California kids are pussies. They oh, yeah. They are pussies. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why my kids are not going to the East Coast for college. Uh, that's why I have friends who now I've spread that that out there. Like, be careful if your kid, you, you tell your kid it's not a weekend in Mammoth. Boston yeah. is not a weekend in Mammoth. And I think <laughs> she just... You know, and she did actually she did go to, I think, Northwestern, you know, so there was a time in her life where she wasn't in sunny California. But I just think, again, being isolated, not being able to, like, some do gloomy the things weather you want to do. Yeah. Then he had to go and leave and do his thing. So she's really by herself. Oh, but what I was going to say is back in the Diana days. So Diana was the first princess. Everyone went crazy for her. And then younger brother Andrew, also best friends to Jeffrey Epstein. He married Fergie, and right. Fergie was, you know, not 19 like Princess Di. She had red hair, and at first, just like Meghan, people were like, whoa, she's sassy, she's fun, she's going to, like, add some spice. And then the same thing happened in the press where they constantly compared Fergie to Diana, and they did right. try to say that they didn't like each other, but Diana was like, no. They always got along, even when Fer, who I can't remember which one got divorced, but they really stayed friends after the both divorces. But they they would go and eat, and they would like, they they ne like they, the two of them tried to defy the stories right. by being seen together, by doing stuff together. So do you think it was kind of on Kate to try to squash that the way that? I did. I think maybe it was, like it was she had the power Kate, but to I also just don't know that, you know, not everybody has that like gumption, you know, right. to just be and she's just, you or know, maybe got she the just three didn't kids, want to get and involved. also there was the rumors. Okay, now let's talk about the other stuff that was going on. There was the very strong rumor that Prince um Prince William was having an affair with the neighbor. Right. That was like this model, former model, which by the way, Kate's totally prettier, but um and they were like neighborhood friends and there's rumors about that and that that was disturbing to his brother um harry and so she was maybe not as strong of a person at that time because if True. they were dealing with their own marital riff maybe she couldn't her also, last thing yeah, she yeah last thing have she energy wants to... to like stick up for this girl that she's known for three months right and plus she's battling her own tabloid stuff with that right so that's true. exactly yeah. and then of course the Prince Andrew stuff. Right. You know, all the stuff with Prince Andrew, were they trying to, you know, sway the royal tabloids and all that? 
away from Prince Andrew and what was going on there. And, you know, because even Prince Andrew's daughter, she said she was friends with one of them, Uni or something. She was, oh, right. I knew Uni. Yeah. That's Fergie's daughter and Beatrice. One of them got married. I don't know that it was during COVID or what, but they were going to have a big wedding and it just, they just had it very small. Right. Because between Prince Andrew and something, they just were like, we're was... not going to have this big shebang. But if they have all that power over the press, that's like, that's the only thing that was curious. Is like, and I think you said that's the beginning. If they have all the power over the press, then they could, how did they not squash every story that they right. don't want? Exactly. Why didn't, why weren't, why didn't the BBC call pr the queen and go, um, yeah, we have a reporter here that just interviewed your pedophile son who is denying this yeah, maybe to that's the point. a little too big to squash, I guess, because even yeah, like, that's a, yeah, too, I guess so, so, yeah. You're right, so like, why is it, so I, maybe they're seeing, thinking, yeah, so that story couldn't get squashed, but you're gonna, but you're gonna let this thing flourish about avocados, right. and you're gonna let this thing flourish that I, we made each other cry, or I made her cry, or, um, you know, so I just, yeah, I think with that, and then, um, so then w when she says she's, and she gets pregnant, and she just is like, I don't see anywhere out of this forever, and she becomes very depressed and suicidal, and she says to Harry, um, I need help. Um, can you please get me help? And then, like, it sounded like he said, here's the thing, I don't under, I understand if maybe the institution, the firm, the royals, didn't want her to go to promises in Malibu, for uh, you know, an emotional retreat or right. or psychotherapy, but why wouldn't they go? Okay, let's bring in. Uh, let's. I mean, movie stars. Bring in somebody. Jessica to help Simpson you. had home therapy for yeah. alcoholism and depression. I mean, why wouldn't you have home therapy? Like, okay, she doesn't she have to, to go see anywhere. Somebody. We're going to see yeah. a psychiatrist. We're going to get her on some meds. We're going to. She's going to, you know, talk to someone every day for three hours. She's going to, like, And she even said, like, as an actress, she's like, I had a union behind me. And they would actually, like, you can actually get resources, you know, yeah. from, like, that stuff. And I'm in this huge Shout institution. out to sag -Aftra. Yeah, uh, sag We actually are both members of sag -Aftra. We sure are. They've never sent me home psychotherapy, but I might need it. Um, no, that part was depressed. That's kind of when I really turned. And then I was well, like, I was then like, now I need a, sudden... a Team Harry and Meghan shirt because I just felt it was so sad because it was it didn't feel like she was exaggerating about her experience at all. It was just like she was but I also in think the pits. Like, people that, you know, I do think mental illness can be situational and can be a, a specific circumstance. And I think there's a lot of women, um, men too maybe, but women that are in a, a point in their marriage even, or a something where yeah. they're just like, I just, I, I, I don't know how this is ever gonna fix. I don't see how I can get out of this, or there's so much to do, I don't know how I'm gonna get the money to leave, get divorced, da da da, and yeah. they do become suicidal, so I feel like. Well, she said that very one, one very poignant thing that yeah. kind of like made me feel bad for being, for like hating the flower girl dress combo, because I obviously don't know what happened. Yeah. But she was like, you never know, you know, just have compassion, because you never know someone's circumstance, which right. I think she's had a battle, battle a lot of that with this interview, because there's like yes. a lot of people black, like, oh, I feel so sorry for you, you were rich and royal, and it's like, okay, oh, yeah, but that doesn't mean let's you, can't, get into you that. can't be Bethany, in pain. Yeah. Bethany Frankel. Also not having a wonderful Monday morning. No. Not having one. Especially not after that, by the uh, way, because she said all her, she like blasted her before the yeah, so she, interview, right? She, so. uh, like here's the thing with Bethany Frankel. Bethany Frankel is jealous. She's jealous that she's that Meghan Markle, along with Oprah and everybody else has a podcast. Well, welcome to the club, girl. I was here five and a half years ago. <laughs> Everyone has a podcast. Stop being a jealous bitch, okay? Yeah. She's jealous and and bitter and she also said i'm gonna write something kind of nasty and heinous so that i get the press and then people will tune into my podcast because it's dropped since i started right so she says this this nasty is stuff. that what you did with your humphrey yogurt thing you were trying to stir up the i almost wrote i'm not <laughs> bethany frankel i'm literally asking like how does someone work at 13 years old in la California in it's not 1812. Yeah, no, okay, I'm, I'm, it's it's under investigation. It's don't under worry. investigation, and I apologize to Humphreys, you know, and I I, I hope they don't get shut down, canceled. <laughs> they won't get canceled if you then you get seen wearing eating a yogurt without a mask, uh, and it says Humphrey yogurt, and then it's like Sarah Colonna supports child labor and doesn't give a shit. Yeah, and I'm and actually Eric Roberts, <laughs> and I'm actually trying to 
to okay so bethany said this let me see what she said um she said cry me a river frankel tweeted to her 1.5 million followers comparing Markle's plight to her own again making it about herself i, yeah. know, I hate that when people do that well, again also, like she's something i have in common with me it's also like you've done pretty she's doing pretty well for oh, herself of course. and also has had like kind of numerous public breakdowns right well, so, she she had several seasons she left she left um so did she Real want pe- of Beverly she want Hills. She to have had her for her then. Yeah, she had her own talk show that did not make it. As many don't believe me, I'm not going to rip off your failed talk show. Okay, like yeah, a lot of no, them failed. She, yeah. You got still had a talk show, and actually I was on it, which was nice. But anyway, <laughs> she was someone pulled up Talk of Shame, who I follow on Instagram. She Talk of Shame pulled up um, Kenya from Real Housewives of Atlanta talking to Bethany on her talk show. And Bethany goes, I mean, when I was on Housewives, all we did was, you know, say, I'm up here and you're down here. And that was like blasphemous. But what are you guys going to do if you can't keep pulling wigs and hitting each other? And and Kenya really was good. She was like, um, first of all, you know, that's not what our show is only about. Yeah. Um, we are the top rated show because we're entertaining. We have interesting stories. We're relatable to people of all different ethnicities and genders and that's why it's a hit show yeah and it was like whoa and i'm like she's just she's bitter because she's like i used to be on housewives don't need anymore so now i'm gonna shit on it right so then she goes back to housewives cries and cries and cries for two seasons and then leaves again and then you know and so now she's like, oh, my God, why, why is Meghan Markle copying me and having a podcast? <laughs> it's like, no one's copying you. The whole fucking world has one. Okay, so then she goes, the real house so, says, so she says, um, cry me a rival, river, comparing Mark's, Markle's plight to her own as a high-profile reality star, saying she took the trappings and the beatings, meaning Bethany did, after choosing that life for the richers. It's a rose with petals and thorns. You can't play stupid and smart, she insisted of enjoying the tra- okay so she's saying she's loving it and then she watched it and felt like a real asshole yeah. and said uh emotional distress and racism racism must feel suffocating and powerless um polarizing and then she said uh that oh she says about herself i'm polarizing unfiltered often flawed person with a voice adding that she thought oprah's interview was surprise was a surprising choice during the pandemic so she was kind of bagging on it like you want a private life, yet you're doing these interviews. But at the same time, Oprah came to them. Oprah has a huge project with Harry. Yeah. And and the, and Oprah gets and into that. And it's not goes, a surprising choice during a pandemic. I mean, it's like the only what else way you, you can hang out with someone is to get an interview. When and you be get, outside. And be outside and have like a million tests and people with face shields on. Like they can, it's like the only choice during a pandemic. It's like we can't go out to dinner, but we can have an yeah. interview in this nice you know, backyard. Interview with Oprah, yeah. Yeah. And um, in sensible shoes. And so <laughs> she, you know, so what what i did like and oprah did obviously a great job she's been listening to juicy scoop and i gave her some tips and she said um now a lot of people thought this was your plan from the start that then you were going to leave and then you know now you have archwell entertainment which includes all this stuff including the rescue chicken mission but also podcast apple shows development at Netflix, uh clothing furniture they've trademarked a bunch of stuff they could do anything yeah uh, and they were like, well, that wasn't our plan. Our plan was to just be the royals and go around and help people. And, you know, um, but we had we had to go because and this is where it gets complicated. Yeah. So go ahead. Well, that part was so it was so like weird and revealing because I'm like, what? You know, when she was kind of like we would have been still doing all of this and we just kind of wanted to do leave sometime you know like it just doesn't see why can't you have that balance why can't they let so them? i was reading more about it okay and here's the thing so they wanted to leave and go to canada right and what i read is okay so now you're not living on the palace grounds so the security for you in another country when you're not really doing what we want you to do as employees we don't want to pay for your security. Right. And then he was like, well, I need the security because I'm the prince and my child will need the security. And they're like, well, actually, your child is not going to be a prince. And that is where I think people were like, because that child is got black genes. Like, why? Right. And what I've read is, no, 
it, no matter what, his child would not have been a prince or a princess until uh, the queen dies. And and I think, I don't know if he has to wait till his brother becomes king. But aren't his and brother's then, kids princes? They, they are because they're the line. Uh. But then these the other groups, they're like, not always princes and princesses. Now, I think Andrew's daughters are princesses, but Andrew is Charles's brother. So it's like I, there is something okay. that, it's like, so it was and not, and, there, and it wasn't like, hey, he'll never be a prince. He just can't be a prince at birth. He might be a prince later on when, if these people, whatever, enough people die. Right. So, like, I, I'm not really sure. So then, well, the security thing was really strange because it was also, I mean, and he, Harry even said, he's like, so I, you know, they said that they couldn't do that. But then I said, well, have my, you know, does anything about me change? Does it really, they were like, well, if you're leaving, then your duties change or whatever. So you, you don't get the security. And he was like, does the risk change? And they said, no, but bye. Like, I th no security. I think it was obviously not cool and weird, but it's a different corporation than any others. But it's just like if you had a job, like when we were like at Chelsea lately, and someone we said- needed <laughs> We needed security. And someone said, hey, um, I want to write for the show. And sometimes people would present this and they were like, we can't do it. But on Thursdays and Fridays, I want to be able to work from home or, or leave or be at home. Right. And maybe maybe with certain people they're allowed. But they're kind of like, well, you can't really have it both ways. Like, Or I want to work on this TV show for three weeks, but then I'll come back and be a writer on the show. Right. But but can I still keep my benefits as a writer on the show? Can I please? You know, any whatever That's thing true. there is, it's yeah. kind of like you, it's all or nothing. And so then they even said that. He goes, people were thinking I wanted my cake and eat it too. But I, it was really just like, well, wait a minute. And then he kind of was like, well, really, again, there really is no choice but just to leave this all together. Take my millions from my mom, which I thought that was interesting. Yeah, he said I wouldn't, if I didn't have the money my mom left me, I wouldn't, we wouldn't have made. Because I was wondering that too. Like if you leave that family yeah, and, um, you know, she hasn't worked in a bit or whatever. Not that, I mean, I'm sure she had some good money from her show, but like that runs out after a while. Like I just was, I was curious how that worked money wise. So then he said it right out. Like I had money from Yeah, and mom. then he goes, oh, we never even thought of these. Then a friend said to us and said, you know, there's these things called streamies. It's like, what? Like, oh, I know. I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, you've never heard of Netflix. You've never heard of podcasts. Like, you've never heard they of, like. They've never Googled anything. You've never, Heather. yeah, you never Googled it. You never thought that, like, hey, I can sell some flat tummy tea. This is what I think. I think that. <laughs> flat tummy tea. <laughs> in, in a plan to try to make a life for themselves. There was a moment where, you know, just like J-Lo woke up a year ago and said, everyone from Jeffree Star to Kylie Jenner has skin care. I have the best skin of anyone on earth. Yeah. Why am I not getting it on this like YouTube, this, you know, these not being L'Oreal. Why don't I make my own skincare thing? I'm the best. And I think that she kind of looked around too and was like, we can be the Kim and Kanye, providing we don't get divorced, the Kim and Kanye <laughs> of Santa Barbara. We can, we can, we can be Joanna and Chuck Gaines. We, we have style. We are more famous than Kim and Kanye were more famous than the Gaines, were more famous than the flip and flop people, were more yeah. famous than any of these other entities. We could do it all. We could have nutrition. We could do it all. And why not? It's and get just going to be chickens and chickens. Yeah. And it's just going to be us or somebody else. So why not us? Yeah. Why not us? Like, which I agree with. Why? Totally. Just because these industries were started by no names, like podcasting, YouTubing, it all started with people that couldn't be on TV. And now everybody that, is famous is like, oh, I'll take some of that along with some OnlyFans. Yeah. Like when they were showing a little bit of their son on the beach, but that now they won't show his face anymore. Oh, right. I was like, I think I need to get an OnlyFans page, but only show Archie like playing around. <laughs> like you want to see Archie's face? You know, you got to get on OnlyFans. Like I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they might. They might and have to. And I don't to. begrudge it. I don't begrudge any of it. No, I, mean, I actually think it's impressive what they built by leaving. I'm telling you, I Patreon's mean, around the corner. Santa Barbara is expensive. It is. It's very expensive. Thank God, Tyler Perry. But I mean, they live down the street from Oprah. And Tyler Perry gave him his house and his security. I know. I was like, I want to stay at Tyler Perry's house. I mean, talk about, like, oh, the prince has to, to couch surf. Hey, <laughs> Ty Ty. Ty Ty. It's <laughs> Harry and Meg. Do you? God. 
uh, this is so embarrassing, but we are driving down in a van from England. <laughs> <laughs> and how did he We've come on some hard times? I got in a fight with my dad. He's not answering my calls. Can do you have any spare mansions? Yeah, and security it... <laughs> that we could just hunker down in. Oh, and uh, God, if I it's got to have a chicken coop. Why couldn't we all quarantine there? It sounds nice. Oh, a chicken coop. I mean, how did they? I didn't understand that really. I mean, I think it's awesome that he did. I just didn't know that relationship. Where did yes. Tyler Perry and was he friends with? Um, Harry or with Meghan? Um, on a much smaller lev- smaller level, you know, when you're a little bit of a little bit famous, mm-hmm. like you or an I are, sometimes you'd let me stay in your Woodland Hills mansion if the shit I'd fell like, apart, I'd, right? I'd absolutely let you and your strawberry blonde prince come and stay. But also, you know, just like Bravo celebrities make friends with each other, like super famous people. Like, are you telling me like Oprah's not like? Megan and Harry, total delights. Yeah. Gail and I had scones with them. Tyler, you're gonna die. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll come to my house. Tyler's come, and then you're and now. I'll sit you right next. They have a great time. Of course, they're gonna get along. Where they're, was Stedman? All, where was Stedman all, in this conversation? Stedman never gets invited to anything. <laughs> he, he had to pick up the scones, and drop them off. <laughs> She's still mad because Stedman walked out in a red bow tie at her 50th birthday. And she's like, I told you I'm the only one in red. Um, no, but I think, yes, of course they would all get along. Of yeah. course all smart people and a certain level of wealth, of course they're going, why wouldn't they get along? No, of course. I just didn't know which one he was friends with because I was like, how does that come up? I mean, that's Well, I a don't lot. think it's like he and Harry were, you know, were old Soul cycle chums buddies. playing um, whatever, some English polo together. I mean, they obviously met in the last few years. Tyler Perry goes to Soul Cycle. That's all, or used to pre-COVID. That's all I'm saying. Oh, another bring it around uh-huh. yourself, Sarah. I mm-hmm. thought I was the one that was making it about myself and Sarah is stepping Between on my, my Humphrey Yogurt and my Soul Cycle oh story. I am toes. definitely okay. taking over this podcast. Sorry. That is fine. Um, so, you know, I am, I'll say this. I'm really, really happy that they are safe. They're in Santa Barbara. They have their chickens. They have a way to make money. I think their projects could be interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know that Harry can work a camera or an audio recorder like Peter Peter, maybe you would like to go over you and help. You said Peter, her. and he literally just looked like look up, like I think he was nodding off. <laughs> he, his head shot up like he was about to fall asleep. Peter, a <laughs> lot of husbands have had to step in and help with their business, with their wife's streaming jobs. Oh, mm-hmm. And um, Harry, you know, I'm assuming they're recording it themselves. I don't think they have anyone coming in and helping them. No, um, no, they have so to do it like, on their own. So it's like wake up at the crack of dawn, feed the chickens. Feed the baby. Get to the streamies. Get, like, <laughs> get, cue up the podcast. Let's go. The streamies sounds like what you have, like when you have to pee in the middle of the night. <laughs> That's what a streamies sounds like. I do, I do have something I want to say out loud, and it's going to cause, cause some controversy. But I do think, prediction, Harry's going to get new teeth by within the next three years. Oh. Why, I didn't even notice They're not teeth. that bad. No? But you cannot notice. live in this town. Without veneers? Without big, giant chompers. I, have no, I I didn't get, do I need them? No, because you already have night seats, but he, I got an Invisalign, though. But, I Invisaligned them. Oh, good. Yeah, but he, like a few years ago. He doesn't have great teeth. They're a little small. They're a little bit uh, far apart. They're not horrific English teeth, mm-hmm. but they definitely <laughs> are not Santa Barbara chomper delights. Right, right. You got. I, my husband used to have small teeth, and he got the veneers. Exactly. He, yeah, Again, it's just, yeah. He's following the steps. Yeah, of Strawberry cup. Prince yeah. of Canada football player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that's one prediction I have. Okay. Um, I yeah, can't stop looking at this photo of her. I'm like, she really is beautiful. She is so freaking pretty. And um, I really like someone to do my and makeup. And then when she fed the chickens, her hair was like so long and glossy. Yeah. She's got those pregnancy vitamins. She's, um, I don't know. I don't really know what, okay, I don't so, know what makes so people's then, hair okay, long and glossy. And then of course, let's just talk long. about the worst part of the story, which was when she said to Oprah, there was conversation and concern about how dark my child's skin might yeah. be and oprah's face was amazing now some people think she knew and it was bad acting as watching oprah for all these years i actually don't think it was i think it was a surprise i think she looked surprised because it I, was that's a like that's a big thing to i feel like they probably didn't want they didn't 
but obviously Harry and Megan knew that Megan was going to say that. Right, they right. They definitely yes. had a plan. Oh yeah, they I'm had like, a plan. I'm going to go in and I'm going to talk about this stuff first. Then you're going to come in and back me up. And then so then Oprah said, "Who, you know, who said that?" He's like, "I." And you know, he shut her down. I won't say. I won't. And then she's like, "Okay, if." Just, just like wink your eye if it's this. No, he's like, I'm not telling you, Oprah. But then there was sneeze a- if it was. Yeah. <laughs> if it was Kate. Um, yeah, I don't. That was, and he looked really uncomfortable. He was like, I'm not ever having that conversation. Basically, I'm not comfortable. I'm never going to tell who who said that. To and me. I also think that um, then Oprah said some article came out this morning saying that Oprah has confirmed that it absolutely wasn't William, the the great the grandfather. And the great grandfather of Archie or the queen, that right. it was neither one of them that said it. So it kind of makes you go, it's probably either his dad. I know because he also said they brother. were, yeah, they had like, they, at one, when he said his dad to stop taking his calls, you know, about that was sad. And so I wonder if they had more of a, there was more to their falling out than. Yes. Which, okay, now here's the other part that is controversial. And these are just questions, people. Do not come after me. I, myself have talked about the articles and the rumors that Harry, some people believe he is not King Charles' child, okay? Because he doesn't look like King Charles, or not King, sorry, Prince Charles, his dad. dad. However, he's a redhead. And uh, there's a photo of, um, an old photo of uh, the Queen's husband, Andrew, his paternal grandfather, and Harry looks a lot like him. Harry also looks a lot like Dan, um, Diana's brother. Right. But Harry also looks very similar to these two redheaded gentlemen that were in Diana's life. One was her equestrian rider and one was some other guy that she like was friendly with. So people were like, oh, is he not? And they've had to deal with that. So the other question is, in, these, in this wondering, oh, I wonder what the baby... Were they trying to say, I I hope that if the baby is of a, a, a darker skin tone, people don't question that you're not the father. Because we had to deal with that, with you not looking like Charles, right. but that you clearly were your mother's child because she gave birth to you, but you also look like the mother's family, but then you all, now you also look like the... I don't know. I think it's just really off. Like I think it's... Really, really awful, and I definitely could see why someone would cut their family off for that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, when you're dealing with, like, I don't know. I don't know. He just seemed so... It disgusted. Just, disgusted by yes, it. Yes, he so was disgusted. So I, I feel like it was a very shitty racist thing that somebody I think brought was... up, and I don't think it was brought up gently. From his... I, obviously, it wasn't yes. there, but it doesn't you sound there. like it. I, well, I was. I That's thought, actually what I'm here I to tell you. I thought you spent two years yeah. undercover... As her dresser. Now, people say that she was mean to her assistants and stuff like that. Um, again, I'm like, that's bullshit. Like, who, and that's also weird, too, like that you step into. There was the, the movie Rebecca that came out on Netflix recently with Army Hammer before it came oh. out that he was a cannibal. And the I mean, movie that's... is about this girl. It's like in the times of like <laughs> I the love 40s. It to, before it came out that he was a cannibal. You know, and, guys. And she marries Army Hammer and his wife had died and the whole staff all worked for the dead wife named Rebecca. And so they're like, it's weird. Like she's literally, it's like her stepping in. She didn't hire these people. These people have been trained by the royal family of how things are done. Right. Oh, I also thought it was interesting how she said there wasn't, you've seen it in the movies, there isn't like a, now I teach you how to be a princess. You know, there yeah. wasn't any of that. The curtsy thing, all that stuff. But I feel like in The Crown, and of course, Crown was scripted, but in the Crown, it feels like Diana did go through a little bit of princess school. Yeah, and I think she was saying like that's not how like it's not like she said like that it's not like it is in the movies and TV shows. There yeah, isn't no, that. And, and then she had to do the curtsy, which by the yeah. way, I know how to curtsy. I have tried it once and I fell, so I don't. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stand up right now. Please and just show me. Show you. Okay. I did it at my debutante ball, Mary Dukey debutantes. Uh, at Mary the, who? It's the Mary, Mary Dukey was the woman who created oh. the debutante ball. <laughs> and it was at the Pretty Woman Hotel. Okay. Beverly Wilshire. Mary Dukey debutante. And you came out and this is how you had to curtsy. Okay. okay. Who were you curtsying you to? Move the camera. I want, I want people to see it. Okay. Peter's asleep. Um, I, no, I would just do it afterwards. Let's just cut 
that. I'm going to show you my curtsy and we'll put it on social media. Okay, I can't wait. Um, <laughs> but you definitely have to be wearing the right outfit. So I hope he didn't spring this curtsy thing on her when she was in a pencil skirt. Oh, right. You couldn't possibly. Yeah. You would just, yeah. So, or if well, she was finishing her shift at Humphrey Yogurt. I right. just hope neither one of those happened. She's wearing an apron with yogurt on it and has to meet the queen. Um, anyway, uh, I like her a lot. I like him. I liked his suit. I'm looking forward to his new teeth. I'm looking forward to the baby girl. Um, excited that Oprah's back. Yeah. I mean, doing she's lots back of interviews blazing. and things. The big um, one. It was all anyone was. I'm excited for their target line. I think Joanna and Chuck Gaines should be shaking in their live, laugh, love wood boots. Oh, they have a target line too? I didn't hear that. They have that a part. whole target line and they have an entire channel now of programming that they run called like something with an M. Um, who else should be shaking in their boots? Well, besides Bethany Frankel, who face? I apologize. <laughs> what's his face? Who. Um... Uh, well, I feel like Megyn Kelly was doing a lot of blasting Meghan Markle before last night, too. Oh, because she was jealous that she took her name? I, I, yeah. <laughs> I feel like she, I might have misread it, but I feel like she was doing a lot of, like, Cry Me a River type stuff, too. So she probably had to uh, reel that in today. And then, um, it's like, who was well, the I guy? Like, who what was they got to, I also think, Didn't like, he have a target line? Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah he's in prison. Yeah. But what, <laughs> I guess he has other things what, to worry about. But the about. thing is, what do they have to lose? He got to be the prince. The first half is his life. And the second half, he's going to be a Hollywood mogul. Yeah. Like, you really got the best of both worlds. You get to hang out with fun and cool people. What What are you going to miss? You've had tea. You've had smoked salmon. You've learned to curtsy. You've been in a cold house. Like, it's now it's time to freaking live. Like, oh, anybody, I mean. You think that whole family isn't like, oh, my God. Look at so, how they get jealous. to live in Santa Barbara. I think they're super jealous. Yeah. And that was the other thing people said. Were they hinting that when Megan did her tour, when they did the tour in Australia and she was so well received and she got such great press, oh, much like Diana, then did the other people that did those same similar things get jealous and they got nasty to her. And that's and when they, they wanted they to take her the down Yeah, they took her down. That's what Let's it seemed like. They took her down a notch because Kate never been received. But Kate was always liked. What I can't believe that Kate would have an issue. No, I, I, I just... I don't either. I feel like it was media driven and that she, I mean, who knows? I guess they also have to create stories. Yeah. So they're like sitting around and they're like, um, she likes avocado toast. So, you know, avocado is actually like more water and, she, you know, like, like they're just creating stuff that really, I mean, that's digging deep, by up, the way, if that's all you could come avocado up with. Toast about was, somebody. The avocado was my, by far my two favorite one that she's out of cover whispers and then fuck you avocado lady you're ruining the environment yeah being the avocado whisperer yeah that's a lot of people clearly eat my favorite i actually and hate also avocados she sort of just chose, fyi so i she kind of chose um avocado ish as one of her wedding colors that's true Lime -ish. maybe that was um maybe that was her fu to them for letting that story get out as she made the queen dress like an avocado for her wedding mm. Maybe she was like. This Maybe is that was one of the fights. Like, why? Why is it all? Why is it? It's a green act. I, why are we doing yeah. green accents? And she's like, well, you shouldn't have put out the avocado story. Maybe now be we haven't a nice heard from lavender. her from her amazing half sister Samantha. What do you think of that? Oh, I mean, how has she not already tried to like get a media blitz for herself on this? Well, she has a book out. Then she also said, "I lost my father," um, and I thought, did. The Markle father die, so he is not dead. Oh, okay. She just meant lost him in like a relationship. Yes, yeah. because of all the other stuff, you know that he, Samantha put him up to telling the paparazzi to take photos of my father. Then the father had like a heart attack and couldn't make the wedding. Oh, right. And all of that was really awful. And um, but I think um, but I think there's totally hope for she and her dad now that she's in the states. Yeah, that they can like. Why fences. can't? Couldn't he just come up to Santa Barbara? And no one would even know if he was visiting and like hang out with the baby. Oprah would and... know. She's hiding in the bushes, waiting to fucking get another story. But she on just them. like let that go. She's like, I lost my father. I lost a baby. And she's like, mm hmm. I mean, if I was Oprah, which I was hoping it was going to be, it was between Oprah and me. But I would have said, <laughs> I understand. I, I would really love Mary what you've been through and how awkward scoop. and hard it must be. But. Your father is still alive. Maybe now that you're in the States, maybe you guys could forget about your crazy sister, Samantha. She's awful. Right. The, also the other half-brother, awful. But the dad, 
you know, he he was a set director on Friends. He helped do your plays at Immaculate Heart. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe yeah, maybe or maybe uh, maybe pre-interview Megan was like that's like off skim limits. Up. Yes, maybe she doesn't want right. her family to talk about you know because she they felt give them anything give to them, talk about. Yeah, yes. so it's possible that she told uh, Oprah when she was zipping up her boots. By the way, I really love the boots. I don't know why I'm obsessed. They're probably like Stuart Weitzman's, by the way, or something really fancy. But now, do you I'm think just, that, if I jealous. do you think if we do a show in Santa Barbara, there's that really nice theater. I remember when I saw Bill Maher there. Do you think like Harry and Meghan and Tyler Henry and the security and Oprah would come just for like a night of just chuckles and like let it loose? Definitely. Yeah, they probably get a table all together. I mean, because I I'm totally pro Meghan Markle. I always have been. I knew this would happen. I thought she would like have a talk show as a princess in England. I always knew that she was never going to be OK with just making appearances and doing humanitarian work right um but i but now she can do all now she's doing all of it i feel like we won we got oh my other question is that you're married to a canadian prince Mm -hmm. will harry become an american oh well i oh i said tyler i meant to say tyler perry not tyler henry but tyler henry might be fun to come around to Tyler um, Perry will well, be at the Tyler show. Tyler Henry with would us. also go to your show. Uh, yes. Um, I, he, I don't, I doubt it because he probably, like, my husband's gotten a, gr- a green card. Okay. But he does not want to give up his citizenship. Can't you have dual citizenships? Wouldn't I the ba- And wouldn't maybe the children, now this little one. Oh, uh, the children will be. Wait, will this, ooh, will this princess to be, but she's not a princess. This little girl in the tummy, she will be American. Right. But, but the then other one was could they go to England and get her her dual citizenship because her father is English? I don't know how dual citizenship works for sure. Do you think Prince Harry has to I wait mean, in a long passport line? Or do oh, you definitely. Think- yeah. No, he has to go and he has to oh, stand six feet apart with his mask on and because the lines are longer right now. And yeah, he definitely has to wait. In we're going to we're going to end this episode. <laughs> and I'm you are going to be Megan. OK. And I'm going to be Samantha Markle. Oh. She watched last night. OK. OK. Ding, ling, ling, ling. Oh, God, I guess I'll answer this. Um, hi, Samantha. Hey, Meg. It's your oh, sister, Jesus. Samantha. Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know if you know I have a book coming out. I don't appreciate that you didn't uh, pitch it to Oprah. All you had to say, she has a book club. It's called The Pushy Princess. Well, yeah. You know, I don't, I mean, God, I mean, girl. that's, if you, if you just listen to yourself and what the title is, then that's probably why I didn't want to promote your book. Because it's about me. You know just what, to capitalize Megan, off of- I have been nothing but nice to you. That's not true. I babysat you when I was 18 and you were born. Hmm. I took you to the Humphreys yogurt to get that job at 13 years old. Yeah, you forced me into child labor. So I just, since then, have really had a bad Is this taste what this is mouth. all about? <laughs> is it because I made you work at Humphreys yogurt with my friend? Because I just did not get it. Like, all of a sudden, we were friendly, and then you became the princess. And, like, I'd go by your house. I'd ask you for those candlesticks. I'd ring the doorbell, and you ignored me. Now you're in Santa Barbara. A lot of the things that you would do were considered stalking, to be honest with you, because I wouldn't answer your calls. or And you were supposed to – I think I, at one point I had tried to put a restraining order against you because you were circling the house all the time. Well, guess what? It seems my- like you just wanted, like, a piece of my, like, fancy life. And yeah, so and you think you're so fancy with your life. I'm pretty fancy. Eggs. Yeah. Well, I have fancy chickens and you a fancy think you're life. You so great. And you're just bitter. You're just bitter you know and you're what? writing books about me. Nobody's going to buy it. I told Oprah actually to make sure that nobody buys it and she can actually control the, she's so powerful that she can control the purchases of every single person in the United States and England and Australia. And nobody's going to buy your book. Well, it, nope. I'm taping this conversation for the sun. Hmm. And um, yeah. Go they, ahead. they don't like you. They think you're such a bitch. Oh, what they are they? Are they the same ones that wrote about the they avocado? Could, they're so glad that you're gone. Well, the whole I don't country care. I'm right glad now, I'm gone. The whole country right now is dancing an Irish jig, even though they're English. Hmm. Okay? Well, they can they dance away thrilled. because I live a free life with my chickens and my hot husband, and you're just a bitter, bitter you sister. You know what? Not that cute. I wouldn't want him. 
Wow. Not my type. Well, he wouldn't want you. I'm not into redheads. What's your type? Sorry. What's your type? Uh, not redhead princes. Oh, okay. Cool. Sa- cool story. Okay. You know what? I thought we could be friends again. I thought because you're in America hmm. that you might want to come on my podcast. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I, it's you called have a Pushy a podca- Princess yes, Podcast. Well, why don't you go on Bethany Frankel's podcast? Why don't the two of you hook up and do a podcast? I heard there's one called Juicy Scoop. You can go on. Oh, yeah. That girl is... So hilarious. Uh, yeah. She's actually, funny. Actually, actually, oh, you know what? Actually, you actually, can't. We're I'm going gonna on, go it. on her. No, you can't because we're going on it. Harry and I are going on it. We just booked it. And she said the one stipulation I put in is that you can't be on it if I do it. So you're out. Thanks, Do Heather. you imagine if <laughs> I booked Samantha Markle, recorded it, put it out, goes up while I go to sleep, woke up the next morning and saw that at like 12.30 a.m., I got an email from Megan and Harry saying... Megan and Harry at gmail.com. Yes, Megan and Harry at gmail.com <laughs> saying, um, we'd love to do your show. We think you're hilarious. I mean... I mean, would I lose my mind? Your whole head would explode. Because You'd there's never no way they're going to come on after that. I would never sleep again. No. Kill myself. You would be able to delete the podcast and just pretend. But it was already up. People no. already saved it. Mm. I hope that doesn't happen. I know. I'm stressed out for you now. Um, this was so much fun. We had other fun. things to talk about. There's nothing else to talk about. I know. It was just, too good. It was too good. Um, Sarah, you are returning to the live stage in Spokane, Washington. Please tell the Spokane people where they can find you. Please come. It's March 11th through the 13th, which is this coming weekend. It's SpokaneComedyClub.com or SpokaneComedy.com. Uh, Thursday and early Friday are sold out so you still have three other options oh, to grab nice. yeah COVID sold out it's limited capacity but I'll take I, it l- I but love I, the sold out shows due to COVID yeah um but they're like they're they, they're it's a pretty big club they're allowing yes. 100 people at a show which is pretty good amount yeah. but you still have a lot of space so just you so everyone knows little area. Yeah, yeah you'll be fine so if you feel good come to those shows and please if, and if you're booking your tickets and you're like you know what I am gonna fly to Spokane to see Heather before you book it, you might want to fly you to San Antonio. Sarah, I'm, Did I just I'm say Spokane. Sarah? Sorry. You always try to sabotage sorry, my shows. <laughs> sorry. You can either fly to Spokane or you can fly to San Antonio. Or most well, likely like, you'll probably live in either city. Like Sophie's and come there. choice. So San Antonio, I will be there this weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday night. Where can so, they get tickets? Oh, they can get it at HeatherMcDonald.net. Where can they get tickets to yours, Sarah? HeatherMcDonald.net, actually. Isn't that weird? I put all my dates on your – because you get more traffic on your website than I do. <laughs> SarahColona.com. And mine's HeatherMcDonald.net. That's beautiful. Sarah – and also, Sarah – also, uh, Megan Markle is copying Sarah because Sarah also has a podcast mm-hmm. like Bethany Frankel and like Oprah – and it is very funny, and it's tell us a little bit about it's it. It's called uh, Are You My Podcast. We do Married at First Sight, which is Love. Sh- obsessed with, and we do like we talk about Lifetime movies. Um, I don't want people to think they can't listen to us if they don't watch Lifetime movies because it's very fucking entertaining. You I promise. It, my, yes. Yeah, my friend Mary Rodzinski is the co-host, and she's hilarious. And obviously, we go off the rails, but we if you didn't watch what we're talking about, it doesn't matter. You'll be entertained, right? Fully entertained. So you love can, it. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks girl thank you and good luck to your prince (laughs) so if you've come this far in the show i know you're dying for even more juicy scoop and you can get it the exclusive juiciest of the juice on patreon you go to heathermcdonald.net you click on patreon we uh have an extra show every friday as well as juicy crimes where we get into the juiciest crimes in hollywood and beyond so check it out